Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, so today I'm going to be presenting to you my newest acquisition of the year. Um, I didn't think it would happen basically in the first month of the year, but when the, when a good deal pops up, I just had to snag it. So I'm just going to do the unboxing and then we'll talk about the watch. So it's a Seiko. Um, yeah, like in my state of the collection video, I did mention that I wasn't really after anything at the moment, um, which was true. But there were always few watches that um, I had my eye on, and this watch was one of them. Alright, so there it is. This is the Seiko S A R A. 011 so Sara I guess is a line um, yeah, let me put that on this stand um, I don't think this is the original box and it didn't have the original paper but it did have the original bracelet so all right so when I, I first came across this watch like many 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 years ago um, like in my early days of collecting um, I think in fact when I was actually looking at my to buy my first mechanical watch um, like I had back then I had a budget of $500 and I was considering the uh, Seiko Recraft but the movement in that watch left me a little wanting mainly because it didn't have um, uh, hand winding and being my first mechanical I felt that experience was pretty important so eventually like I settled on getting that vintage Lord Matic which I was very pleased with um, however like during the search like this watch did pop up and I made a note of it um, at the time it was like way outside the price range I think it was a thousand Canadian um, you know I didn't know about the high grade movement in this the 4L25 being the main culprit for the increase in price so like due to the cost I, it basically like quickly came in and then left my radar um, so it wasn't until like last December when I saw this watch appear on a YouTube channel called I like watches too and he mentioned that he was able to pick this up for around 600 British pounds on Chrono 24. Um, I don't think his model, well, his um, pickup had the original bracelet. So, you know, it, it kind of reminded me about this watch again. And I did a quick search at the time. Um, all the listing on eBay and Chrono 24 at the time was about 1.6 grand to three grand Canadian um, and it was a little much so I was like oh, I'll consider it once I can find a decent model um, for around a thousand so you know I put it all the price alerts on eBay chrono watch recon and being this is like a JDM model I also put alerts on all the Japanese shopping and auction sites um, so yeah, I wasn't in a rush, did my state of the collection video, didn't really mention about seeking this one out. And then like two weeks later, I suddenly see like a listing of this watch on the original bracelet, recently serviced for about a thousand Canadian. Um, this happens, like, uh, it was on this Japanese shopping site called Rakuma. And and then on top, because I use Baiyi, the proxy shopping site, uh, they had a promo for Rakuma for 50% off on the shipping fee. I know it's probably it wasn't much discount, but it worked. It got me to pull the trigger. So all in all, this whole thing was 1,200 Canadian duty, tax, shipping, everything included. So yeah. Uh, Alright, let's take a look a little closer at this watch. 
So for this one, I was actually kind of in the middle of making a uh, pondering time episode for this watch. Um, so I'm just going to use that format to run down the spec and stuff I like and dislike about this piece. So, you know, this is Seiko Sara line. Um, it's introduced in 2006. Um, I, it's conflicting information. I think it was meant to be a brand new line, but some place says it was under the Seiko Brights line. Not sure. It was to basically uh, kind of, I don't know, celebrate would be the word, but to use the new developed movement from Seiko, the 4L25 which is a higher end mechanical movement, it's a high beat. It, all the models were mainly like thin dress watches. And this model was the 011. There was a kind of like the brother of this, the uh, Sara 013, which is the black dial with the Arabic numeral. Um, that one, even though that one didn't have the bracelet, it was actually 20,000 yen more expensive than this one, um, mainly because the black the dial was enamel. Um, so yeah, I think I prefer this design a little bit more. Um, I like index bar uh, markers instead of Roman or Arabic. The shape is your classic square TV case and the crystal is also shaped in a square. Um, diameter website says it's 36. I never actually measured it so let's do that. Uh, I'm getting 35. Okay. <laughs> uh, thickness is supposed to be 11. Yeah, 11 sounds right. Uh, lock to lock, that's actually interesting. Let's see. So lock to lock, I'm getting 43.5 basically. And with the male end links, 48. Okay, uh, lock width is 20. And this has a see-through case back with that beautiful movement or rare movement as well. Um, let's see, crown is a push-pull, but it still has a hundred meter water resistance. I still probably wouldn't swim with this just because it's not a screw down crown. Um, Material stainless steel, the dial. I may have to, for the next part, I may have to add some macro shots because, you know, it's a little difficult. So the dial is very well made. Um, it has this guilloche pattern uh, and a sunburst effect on the top as well. Markers are all highly polished. Hands are polished, logos applied, text, I would enjoy less text, maybe I could forego with the 25 jewel stuff, date is framed, and yeah, the, uh, let's see, yeah, I think the 12, 9, 6 are more triangle markers. The rest is just more like a bar. The, even the center uh, second hand, the running second hand, has this nice polished cap on it. Uh, there's no loom, and the crystal is sapphire with some distortion. I think there's AR coating. The movement. It's not, it's a pretty simple watch. Like, 
it has a date function, hand winding, um, hacking, and uh, it runs at four hertz. The date is uh, there's quick set for the date, and it has an instant changeover at midnight. Winding has uh, automatic and with hand winding. <laughs> And then, so the movement, I think the movement is quite interesting. Uh, give me a second. Yeah, so the movement is actually kind of like a brand new architecture. I put brand new in quotation because the story goes is that uh, Seiko and Sopra was in a joint uh, project together because Edo was slowly removing its Ibosh supply to Soprod and uh, Soprod needed a replacement for the ubiquitous um, at a what is it uh, 2892 yeah um, so they went with Seiko to see if if uh, if they could work together um, so yeah this is, um, I wouldn't say it looks like a clone of that movement, but it's meant to be a drop-in replacement. So if you look at the actual architecture of the Edda, it's quite different, but the size, the thickness, the, um, the position of the crown and all that, the feet, they're all identical to that Edda. Um, but for some reason, well, there's speculations, but basically Sopra got bought by a Hong Kong company and then uh, Seiko didn't want to continue to supply Ibosh movement to a Chinese company. Uh, so that, that deal kind of ended, but Sopra still had, you know, the, uh, the know-how to make this movement. So. Sopra continued to make this movement as the Sopra A10, and now it's called the M100. And yeah, so that's a quite an interesting backstory to this. It's pretty rare movements. Basically, I think Seiko basically lost money on this venture. Um, there's few other family of, of this movement. Um, this is the 4L25. There was a higher end 4L75 made for the Seiko Credor brand. <clears throat> that one had a little bit better uh, regulation. This one was rated minus 15 plus 25. And the, the 4L75 was minus 10 plus 15 and had better finishing. Later few years, uh, Seiko introduced an update of this movement called the 6L35. It had one extra jewel and longer power reserve. And it had the uh, minus 10 plus 15 regulation. And lastly, there was also uh, a 6L75, which is the same, but with a uh, Creedor finishing. Um, so I'm not like, too familiar with this movement but basically people say this is like nothing like any other of the Seiko movements it even uses Inca block instead of Dia Shock um, the 6L didn't but, but the 4Ls did um, and the interesting note of this movement is it's currently still the thinnest Seiko automatic movement measuring at 3.69 millimeters um, which is true for all the 4L and 6L they're all identical I think previous record holder for thinnest automatic in the Seiko uh, family is the caliber uh, 830 um, like from the vintage era that one was at 3.8 millimeters. That movement didn't have a date function. So this one being 
3.7 and it has a date it could be even thinner i think if you remove the date function uh yeah so that's like a quick history of this interesting movement um so this whole project was a pretty big flop didn't really make too much because mainly the price was too high this came out when it came out it was at 210,000 yen and so it was like you know a Seiko that was pushing Grand Seiko price didn't sell well and so in the end this, these became a lot more rare and thought after for collectors um, let's see the fit and finishing of this movement it's no Creedor or Grand Seiko but it's still I think a step above compared to your 6Rs or 4Rs um, power reserve for this is 42 hours the and or bracelet is well finished has a mild taper from 20 to 18 and it's a little bit of micro adjustments clasp is milled twin trigger release uh, yeah there's no I don't think there's on the fly adjustments so yeah, like I said, the MSRP was quite high. Uh, current market about, um, let's say a thousand to 3000 Canadian. Uh, yeah, so I, as much as I like this band, I think I'm a, I'm a sucker for tapering bracelet and this just doesn't taper enough. Uh, so I'm gonna be putting on a leather, Band in a bit just to see how it is yeah so this my wrist is seven and a half and this is how it wears uh, yeah it's definitely something in my wheelhouse but maybe not for everybody Okay, so hold on a second. All right, so I'm back with the strap change. Uh, as you can see, I placed it on this kind of vintage or tampered uh, leather strap. It's got a nice taper from 20 to 16. And uh, the stitching has this nice, uh, I guess, beige or cream stitching color, just kind of nicely paired with the dial. Yeah, so right now I'm just kind of need some wearing in, still a little bit on the stiffer side. Yeah, so this is the what it will look like. So I think it, it wears pretty nice on this leather strap a little bit better than the bracelet uh, and also like the uh, the lug to lug also can come down a little bit the bracelet is this is the original bracelet it's well made solid end links um, but it doesn't have uh, it's still like a pin and collar system so that's still kind of disappointing okay so yeah now with this additional watch the collection <laughs> I'm not sure what to do with my uh, with my 10 watch collection I may have to expand a little bit see where I go uh, let's just take a look at the uh, instant changeover was hacking. Let's take a look. Is this instant or not? Okay, so six minutes past midnight, instant changeover. But yeah, 
I think that's going to be the review for this. Um, let's see what's coming up. I think I there is a very special Seiko that I purchased that's coming soon. It's it's not a, a square or shaped watch. It's a round watch. Uh, it's a gift for someone. So, and I think it's a pretty special one. So stay tuned for that, and I'll see if I need to expand my watch box or not. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned.